Well, hello, my YouTube fellas and gals. So, if you're new to my channel, and use Bookstore. You can reach me through Mendez, not Mendez, <laughs> Mendez, M-I-N-D-A-S, Bookstore and more on Facebook or Tammy's Makeup Treats at gmail.com. Everything will be linked in the description below. If you don't want to order books for me, that's okay, too. You can also use me as a resource center to go look them up so you can find them on your Kindles and Note because I take 10 books per video, read the synopsis so you know what the books are about. And if you are intrigued by any of these books, you can go find them because I love books, if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> so we are on lot 16 today. These are all going to be softbacks, but they're the bigger softback books. They're not your average size softback. And to give you an idea, this is an average size book. These are larger. These will all be $2.50 each. And I also ship media mail so you get the best prices for shipping. And with that, this is book number one. This is The Heart of Thornton Creek by Bonnie Leon. This is the Queensland Chronicles. This is a 2005 copyright. The book's in pretty good condition. It's got some, I don't know, a little bit dark edges starting, but you know, I like age pages. So this is what the book's about. From Boston to the outback, the freedom she wanted wasn't easy to find. Growing up in the late 1800s Boston, Rebecca Williams was raised to be independent, adventurous, strong-willed, and capable. But when she leaves the stylish streets of her beloved hometown to follow her new husband to his native Queensland, she soon discovers the same qualities that earn her respect among her friends and family in Boston don't mix with the way of life in the arid backcountry of Australia. Australia. Though wary of her new surroundings, which seems so foreign to the life she once knew and loved, Rebecca is determined to make a go of it and earn the respect of her new father-in-law at the same time. But this seemingly simple task turns out to be much more difficult than she could ever expect. Seeking only acceptance for who she is and the freedom to be that person, Rebecca finds her relationship with her new husband challenged and her faith tested. A conflict simmers in the heart of Australia's rugged bush. Young Rebecca can only pray for courage to endure and faith to love against all odds. Can Rebecca adjust her unfamiliar surroundings? Can she learn to love her new husband and family? Or will her determination and independence lead her to a devastating loss? So that sounds interesting. So that is book number one. Book number two, we have Ain't No River by Sharon Yule Foster. This is a 2001 copyright. It's got a little bit of yellowing right there. It's got a little bit of writing right there. And it came through a little bit on that second page. And over to this one. So whoever did that did it really hard. <laughs> so anyways, that's the flaws. So this is what this book is about. Gavin Daniels is a sassy, bright, self-absorbed DC lawyer with her eyes on a partnership. There's just one problem. Mima, her 70-something grandmother. Mima has been tr transformed. She's suddenly a slimmed down, silver-haired fox with a new attitude. And all fingers are pointing to at a much younger retired pro football player, Gogo -Go Walker, who cruises into Meemaw's small rural, rural town <laughs> with a red sports car and a reputation for womanizing. Eyes are watching and gossip is flying. <laughs> small towns. That's funny. Especially at Big Esther's Beauty Shop. Oh yeah, those beauty shops. When Gavin discovers her grandmother's Radical emancipation and the man who's leading the charge, she hits the road for North Carolina home, determined to help Mima get together before she goes too far. This looks like a really, really good book. There's the author, Sharon Ewell Foster. That looks like it's going to be a funny one. So there is a book number two. Book number three. 
we have A Snow Globe Christmas by Linda Goodnight, Lisa Manley. This is a true large print. It's 11 inspired. Hmm. So this is what it looks like. You definitely get large print. This is a 2012 copyright. Oh, there's two books in this. Oh, yes. It's a two-in-one. You have Yuletide Homecoming and a Family's Christmas Wish. Yay. Okay. Yuletide Homecoming by Linda Goodnight. Five years ago, Rafe Westfield broke his fiance's heart when he left to join the military. Now the battle-scarred soldier is back in Snow Globe. Andy Codwell tries to keep her distance, but the Holidays family and a sweet stray dog keep bringing her and Rafe together. Maybe this time forever. A Family's Christmas Wish by Lisa Manley. Abandoned by her husband when she was eight months pregnant, single mother Sarah Kincaid vowed to rely on herself. But then she makes a deal with the handsome widowed father, Owen Larson, to provide babysitting services in exchange for his carpentry work on her end. Can two pint-sized matchmakers help them see beyond the past in time for Christmas? So there you go. Book number three. Book number four. We have Just Above a Whisper. Let me cover that book. Isn't that cool? Anyways, this looks to be a pretty good book. This is um, in shape. 2005 copyright. And this is what it's about. Can Love Unlock Two Guarded Hearts? Bound is an indentured service to the Tucker Mills Bank as controlling manager. Reese Thackeray finds comfort in her faith in her friend. She vows to serve her remaining two years with a willing heart. But that's before bank owner Connor Kingsley, all six foot six of him, that's tall, rides into town to audit the bank's business dealings. Thinking that things are finally looking up, Reese starts her work at the Kingsley family manor but recoils from Connor's imposing physical presence, haunted by memories of another master. Not even Connor's soft voice and kind gesture can comfort her. When the bank manager turns vengeful, Connor and Reese must become allies. Can Reese see beyond her place as a servant to accept God's larger plan for her future in her heart? So there you go. Book number four. Book number five. We have A Time to Love by Al and Joanna Lacey like the cover of this one too this is a 1998 copyright it's got some writing in it this is what it's about after her long-awaited wedding day ends in disaster linda force wonders whether she will ever be happy again seeing blake barrett's ad for a mail order bride gives her hope that with god's help she may still find a time to love, but Linda is surprised when Blake informs her he has moved from Sacramento to Cheyenne City. Her surprise turns into suspicion when she meets him at last and he seems uncomfortable in church, nothing like the wonderful Christian man who had written her. Unraveling this mystery within a mystery is the adventure of a lifetime for Linda, whose faith that for everything there is a season brings her at last to her own season of love and happiness interesting so that's book five book number six we have lucia lucia or lucia lucia however you want to pronounce it by adriana trigiani i think that's how you say her name this is a 2003 copyright and this is what it's about it is 1950 in glittering, vibrant New York City. Lucia Sartori is the beautiful 25-year-old daughter of a prosperous Italian grocer in Greenwich, Greenwich Village. The post-war boom is rife with opportunities for talented girls with ambition, and Lucia becomes an apprentice to an up-and-coming designer at Cheek B. Altman Department Store on Fifth Avenue. Engaged to her childhood sweetheart, the steadfast Dante DiMartino Lucia is torn when she meets a handsome stranger who promises a life of uptown luxury that career girls like her only read about it in the society pages. 
Forced to choose between her family and her own dreams, Lucia finds herself in the midst of a sizzling scandal in which secrets are revealed. Her beloved career is jeopardized and the Sartori's honor is tested. So there you go. Book six. Book number seven. We have A Worthy Pursuit by Karen Wittemeyer. This is a 2015 copyright. This is what it's about. Stone Hammond is the best tracker in Texas. He never comes home empty-handed, so when a wealthy railroad investor hires him to find his abducted granddaughter, Stone eagerly accepts. Charlotte Atherton, former headmistress of Sullivan's Sullivan's Academy for Exceptional Youths will do anything to keep her charges safe, especially the orphan girl entrusted to her care. Charlotte promised Lily's mother she'd keep the girl away from her unscrupulous grandfather, and nothing will stop Charlotte from fulfilling that pledge. Not even the handsome bounty hunter with the surprisingly honest eyes who come looking for them. When Miss Atherton produces documentation that shows her to be Lily's legal guardian, Stone must reevaluate everything he's been led to believe. Is she a villain or victim? Then a new danger forces Charlotte to trust the man sent to destroy her. Stone vows to protect what he once sought to tear apart. Besides, he's ready to start a new pursuit, winning Charlotte's heart. So there you go. Book seven. Book number eight. We have One Perfect Spring by Irene Hannon. This is a 2014 copyright, and this is what the book is about. The synopsis. Independent single mom Clara Summers is doing her best to make lemonade out of lemons life has handed her. Workaholic Keith Watson is interested only in the bottom line until a letter from Claire's 11-year-old daughter reaches his desk and changes everything. As the executive assistant to a philanthropic businessman, Keith is used to fielding requests for donations, but the girl isn't asking for money. She wants help finding a long-lost son of a neighbor. As Keith reluctantly digs into the assignment, in his usual results oriental style, he has no idea how involved he and Claire will become, nor how unusual the results will actually be. Who could have guessed that a child's kind-hearted request could bring love and hope to so many lives, including his own? Through compelling characters and surprising plot twists, fan favorite Irene Hannon offers this tender-hearted story that demonstrates how life is like lilacs. The biggest blossoms come only after the harshest winters. So there you go. Book eight. Book number nine. We have a second opinion by Hannah Alexander. Hannah Alexander. It is a 2002 copyright. And this is what the book's about. Lauren McCaffrey. An experienced ER nurse arrives at Dogwood Springs, Missouri, hoping for a fresh start in her career and a convenient escape from her family's humiliating pressure to find a husband. Dr. Grant Sheldon transfers to the local hospital looking for a nurturing environment for his twins who are still reeling from the death of their mother. But this idyllic setting is not free of all the problems he thought he had left behind in the city. When the community's tranquility is threatened by a drug ring and a mysterious epidemic, Grant and Lauren find themselves racing the clock in a desperate search for answers. Second Opinion combines the best of emergency medicine and small-town America and story of love's discovery and a faith at last. So there you go. Book nine. And then the last book in this lot is book number 10. It's called Hungry Ghost by Keith Katchtick. It's an interesting title. It's a 2003 copyright, and this is what the book is about. Carter Cox is a talented but dissipated freelance photojournalist living in New York City's East Village with his sad dog and bad habits. Though he travels to exotic places taking pictures of models and celebrities, he yearns to do more meaningful work and to mend his womanizing ways. 
He also wants to put into practice the lessons he learns from his Buddhist betters, Buddhist, Buddhist betters. But he continues to carry with him his seduction kit, a chessboard, cigarettes, and a Cormac McCarthy novel. At a Buddhist retreat, he meets Mia Malone, a beautiful, smart, devout Catholic determined to remain a virgin until she is married. Carter falls hard, and Mia nervously agrees to join him on a photo shoot in Morocco. With both of their souls hanging in the balance, they quickly go from an ocean to a hot water, crashing their car, getting arrested, running afoul of a sadistic gender me, and trying to flee the country. Over the course of their adventure, they discover that karma and the human heart work in mysterious ways. Inventive and full of narrative surprises, Hungry Ghost, and engaging chronicle of Calvin Klein clad soul searching. <laughs> this sounds funny. It sounds interesting. Definitely action packed. So, with that, there's the 10 novels. And even if you don't read, but you still watch my videos, because you had me in the comment section, because I like to hear from people who watch my videos. And with that, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one, and I'll see you soon. Bye.